Welcome everyone. This is Al Gilbert from the Silicon Valley Business Travel Association blog. I'm the editor of SVBTA Cares. Um, as many of you know, we normally publish uh, an article about at least once a month, but we thought we'd do something different and interview uh, three giants from the travel industry uh, representing direct buyers, hospitality, and airline. Our airline uh, rep will be with us sooner. There was, oh, hold on. She just arrived. Okay, she's getting off the plane. She's walking down the jetway. And here she is. Sorry about that, guys. It's my, right. we're, we're my laptop just died. Okay. No, we're, we're recording now, Charmaine, so you're on the air. Okay. All right, so I was just introducing um, uh, three people from the travel industry, uh, uh, Barbara Arena, who is the Global Travel Sourcing Manager at Oracle Corporation, uh, Ryan Sirodi, Director of Global Accounts at Accor Brands, and Charmaine Bagley, Regional Agency Sales Manager at United Airlines. And we're going to talk about the GBTA uh, conference, uh, given that we haven't had one in a couple of years. Um, so I just wanted to get uh, different opinions, and then we're going to share back with our SVBTA members. So um, if, tell me if I got the numbers right. Instead of 5,000 people like there were in 2019, I think there were, were there 3,500 people who attended roughly? Yeah, I believe that was around 3,500 people. I don't know the diff the breakdown of buyers versus suppliers. I'm sure it's probably something like 75, uh, 25 or so, but, um, but, uh, but yeah. What I liked about that conference was the size of the conference to be able to get from one part of the convention center to the other, as far as the layout for the um, uh, for the actual convention center, the I mean the convention um, the tables. So I thought that was really interesting, and and it was easy to get out of one appointment and into the next, you know, on the trade show floor. It wasn't I, I didn't have to run across the trade show floor. I was happy about that. So, so the so the smaller size helped in that respect, setting up appointments and getting things done. I heard two comments from someone else. One was that they didn't they didn't feel that there were as many buyers here as they have been in the past, which would make sense. Uh, and secondly, uh, basically what you said, Barbara, is that they felt they could get a lot more work done mm -hmm. uh, than in the past. Uh, what about you, Ryan and Charmaine? Actually, I agree 100% with Barbara. It was it was the one thing that I took away from um, this year's convention. It was a lot more quality than quantity in terms of, of meetings. And again, no, for me personally, I had 15 in-booth meetings over the two, two and a half days. And um, no one was late. No one, we got done on time and got people off to their next appointment. I actually also loved the size. I thought it was what was much more conducive to to the uh, to kind of what was going on, um, and it was it was it was great. I, I actually I actually would hope that uh, GBTA would consider keeping the the trade show portion on smaller. I mean, do if we're really going to go with the sustainability, um, trade shows aren't exactly sustainable. Um, in terms of building out these big, huge booths and carpet that only gets used once and all of this kind of stuff, that having something on a smaller scale but more and, and productive, I think is the way to go. Um, but for me, I had, I had a fantastic uh, GBTA this year. So Charmaine, speaking of size, were the booths generally smaller? Was the United booth not the same size it has been in the past? I think that the footprint of our our, our booth personally was probably about the same size as it was um, in 2019, um, but it wasn't, I, I mean, when we left 20, GBTA in 2019, our intention was to come back in 2020 and make that booth humongous, giant, but we didn't. Um, I mean, there were other other companies that had relatively large booths, but then some others had really small booths, um, you know, relative to their size and their footprint on the industry. I have to agree with Ryan and Barbara in that the size of the event, the amount of people or the, the lack of people 
really did make it very conducive to the meetings. And I agree with Ryan in that, you know, nobody was late. <laughs> you know, you run into meetings and, and you don't have to hold on to the person in front of you to kind of weave in between. And I found that people were not hiding their name tags, which <laughs> in the past, you know, because there's just too many. Well, that that hasn't meetings. changed in 30 years. <laughs> I mean, you know, but you're, you're, you're trying to get to one point. And if somebody sees you, you get grabbed. So, you know, I, I think it was, I think it was very good um, that it was much smaller. Um, it certainly didn't have the feel of, of, you know, years past, but um, it was good. The energy was good and the people that wanted to be there were there. Um, and I think it was a much more relaxed atmosphere for sure. Um, did everyone- I, would, I just add one more thing to that. Sure. The other thing that I really enjoyed is at lunchtime, the speakers that we had at lunchtime was more educational versus a president being interviewed or a movie star being interviewed. I felt like to be able to utilize the time the best we possibly could, it was it was a good use of time to have the different speakers that we had at lunchtime. Some of them went off a little bit too long, but I would say, you know, the topic of sustainability and the fact that we were all a captive audience and and learning about sustainability, watching different videos and and you know, uh, the, di the different other subjects at lunchtime. I thought it was really good. It was a good use of time. Was the audience, the lunchtime audience more attentive than they used to be in the past? I felt, I felt they were. They, there wasn't a lot of talking. I think everyone seemed to be pretty engaged with the conversation. And Charmaine, are you still wearing the same uh, face mask you did in, in the convention? The one that I'm wearing now? Yeah. No. I switched out. They gave us all branded United ones so that we could all match. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so that was a, a funny uh, way of introducing this topic. So, what was it like uh, uh, doing business with, with everyone in face masks? We weren't. Oh, really? I, mean, I thought everyone had to wear a mask in, in, inside the inside the convention. Everywhere, um, technically, yes, everyone was yeah. supposed to be wearing wearing masks. But I mean, sometimes the masks came down. <laughs> um, so, I mean, uh, yeah. here in California, it's such our normal to be having them on. I, I would imagine for some people, it probably wasn't something that they were used to, but everyone pretty much followed the, uh, the guidelines of, of what was uh, expected. And I have to say, GBTA did a great job in terms of partnering with Clear. And every morning we had to do a quick little survey on the Clear app show um, that we were, we were good to go to come in. Um, so that part I thought was 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 fantastic um, as well. With, yeah, with I, I would say that throughout the convention, uh, I certainly wore my mask throughout the entire convention, uh, walking to different locations, and and then once I sit down, I kind of pull it down a little bit, like if a, a table of four or five, uh, you know, and then I you know was so it was very spaced out. The one thing they had a lot of communication at the tables, do not add more chairs to your table. Mm -hmm. So it was very clear, do not, do not group up. So you had, I, I want to say four or five, probably five, I think. I it think was. it was five. Five was on five. a big table. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on one of the big tables. And they were crescent shaped. And you know, to have a conversation with someone straight across the table was very difficult because of the size of the table. Yeah. So, uh, but, and then during the appointments, for the most part, I would pull my mask down because it's too hard to talk in the yeah. appointments with the side, with the, the noise of the convention center in, in, you know, in the booths. So I would pull my mask out to talk. And then um, when I'm walking around, so the only time I had my mask off was during like a booth appointment. And, and were the booth appointments, were the booths set up so that people were six feet apart while they were having their meeting? No. No. Okay. No. No. But I think uh, we all made an attempt as much as we could to schedule, to push out as far as we could on the table. I mean, that's for, for the meetings that we had. We didn't have a ton of people during our meetings, but we did try to space out on the table. So roughly 1,500 people did not come compared to 2019. Why do you think they didn't come? 
I think everyone has their own reasons why and, and, you know, being nervous with the new variant coming on and, and just being nervous about the whole situation. It could be you, you have family members living with you that you aren't comfortable with, you know, coming back and carrying something back. It could be, I'm just not ready to get back in the move. It could have been a, a change of schedule. Like I had to leave early because I, I had to, I had to, uh, uh, host Thanksgiving on that Saturday. So I couldn't yeah, attend yeah. the last day. <laughs> and and I would also add, um, Al, on, on to what Barbara was saying, a, a cost factor uh, also yeah. probably played into it for, uh, for a great many people, especially on the supplier side, where, you know, like normally we, we had maybe about 25 people um, that attended sometimes, which was a lot less mainly because of cost. Um, the other thing too that I heard from um, some travel manager clients of mine that normally would come, didn't come because their travel policy said, still says um, business critical only. And it wasn't able to maybe say how critical it was to go to attend an, a convention with 2,000 or 3,000 people, however many it ended up um, uh, being. So I think it's a multi-, a multi factor reason as to why um, uh, attendance would have been down. Do you think another, makes, do you think another factor might have been that among those 1500 people some were no, no longer even in the industry? And that oh, probably yeah. pay, plays into it as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I know a lot of people that have moved out or moved into a position that's no longer relevant to attend the convention. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a couple minutes left. Um, so given that the convention really didn't happen for two years, uh, yet, you, you know, you all continue conducting business among your very, you know, from buyers to sellers. Um, do you think uh, GBTA is still necessary and relevant moving forward? At uh, the convention that is not, not the organization. I'll let somebody else speak. Yeah, I, I think so because um, for our purposes, I mean, our, I mean, you know, we all have customers that are spread all over the country, and GBTA is a wonderful opportunity to see everybody in one place and not have to, you know, you travel to Orlando instead of traveling to New York, and then the next day Chicago, and the next day Dallas. Everybody's in there. You can plan the meetings. I think, you know, for that reason, I think it's still a very good idea, and to and, you know, and we're in the travel business. <laughs> it's important for us to see each other and see our customers, you know. So I, I think I think it still should continue. And I agree 100% with Charmaine. Uh, we're in the people business, you know, for the most part, um, especially on the supplier side. And I have to tell you, it felt so good to see people who I haven't seen in two years. Mm -hmm. I walked away, you know, at, with with some education, with my heart being full, finally seeing people in person. Um, so sometimes GBTA convention is the one time of year our hotel sellers get to see some of our wonderful clients as well because they can't, like Charmaine says, you can't be flying all all around um, all the time. So it, it's for for me personally, I think it it, it there is a place for for a continuation whatever that looks like um i think it's great that it that it changes and the focus becomes a little bit different but uh, i was incredibly happy um with my experience this yeah, year and barbara and i would say for me i know when i go to convention there's just something it, it's like a personal spark for me and i don't think that it changed you know, from 2019, 2018, 17, whatever, it didn't change any more than, than this one. This one, I enjoyed seeing people and I was excited that we're still continuing to go, but I still got that personal spark of just that rejuvenation of, of what was, first of all, what was going on in the industry. But now, you know, there's some new conversations that I, I have three pages of notes for just one meeting that I attended and that I'm following up and just, proposing new ideas, the way things are doing, how did we do it in the past versus going forward? You know, it just gives us an opportunity to just kind of rethink the way that we're doing business and coming together and looking at what other people are doing and benchmarking against them. And it was an exciting time to be there. 
Well, that's great. And I want to thank you uh, all for sharing these opinions. I, 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 the one takeaway that sticks with me is that you think, I think you agree that it would be beneficial if the convention was of a similar size to this year and not the, you know, the, the mega circus that it's been in the past. I agree. Okay. All right. Uh, Barbara, Ryan, and Charmaine, thank you for your time and for your thoughts and have a happy, happy holiday. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Al. Thanks, everyone. Happy Thanks holidays. Back soon. Bye. Bye.